Good day everyone, this is Angel Rabuyo and I will be sharing the process of structural foam molding. But first, let me define what is structural foam. Structural foam is a manufacturing material which pairs a foamed core with a solid outer skin, rather than remaining solid all the way through. It is lightweight and flexible while also maintaining the good strength and stiffness compared to traditional polymers such as polyurethane, polyester, or epoxy. The core decreases the overall weight of the material, while the solid skin allows it to remain strong and impact resistant. So what is structural foam molding? It is a molding process that allows manufacturers to produce very large structural parts. It requires less pressure than other molding processes, so parts are likely to have thicker wall sections. Moving on, let's now proceed to the structural molding process. How are structural foams formed? The process is actually very similar to the traditional method of reaction injection molding. It begins by storing two liquid components of polyol and isocyanate in separate containers. Then, they are mixed together to form a resin which is injected into a pre-prepared mold and cures through means of a chemical reaction. Lastly, an inert gas or chemical blowing agent is added to the mix during the injection process. This changes the nature of the chemical reaction which ultimately occurs. Less polyol and isocyanate are used than in standard solid polyurethane reaction injection molding so that the resin does not completely seal the mold. Instead, the gas or blowing agent is activated by the reaction between the two components. It expands, filling the empty space of the mold with foam. Technology and how the products are made. The structural foam process is a low pressure injection molding process where an inert gas is introduced into melted polymer for the purpose of reducing density and hence weight of the finished product. Structural foam molded products have cellular cores surrounded by rigid internal skins. For step one, Melted plastic has filled the injection unit and is ready to be injected into the accumulator. The large ball valve prevents any weeping into the accumulator. Heating elements and thermocouples maintain the desired melt temperature. Then, the melted plastic is transferred into the accumulator section ready for the gas to be injected. Both ball valve prevents any escape at this stage. In process 3, the gas is then injected into the melted plastic under certain amount of pressure. The top ball valve prevents feedback into the injection unit. The front ball valve prevents weeping of the material through the nozzle. The melted plastic is then injected at speed into the mold tool. Large gates and runners facilitates this process. A front ball valve, which prevents weeping, now actuates to allow the injection of the melted plastic. The top ball valve is closed to prevent any flow back of the material into the injection unit. On entering the molding tool, the gas in the material, now at the lower atmospheric pressure, expands the melted plastic to fill the tool. When the material cools and solidifies, the tool opens and the molding ejects. The outer surface skins and the core is formed. The foamed core is thicker than normal wall sections impart a high rigidity in the part. This kind of process can make toolboxes, trash cans, commercial laundry bins, pallets, and amazingly, it can replace wood, concrete, metals, and fiberglass if that is what we desire and it will be discussed on the next slides. So what are its products and practical uses? Some of the products and applications of the structural foam molding includes toolboxes and trash bins, where the image on the left is the aluminum mold used to produce the trash bin. It also includes laundry bins and stackable pallets, which are commonly found in warehouses. The next one to be discussed is the advantages and disadvantages of structural foam molding. 
So first, let's start with the advantages. There are a lot of advantages for structural foam molding and here are some of them. The first advantage is lightweight. Structural foam parts are extremely lightweight. Typical weights vary from 55 pounds per cubic foot to a mere 2 pounds per cubic foot. Next is low stress and warpage. The process utilizes low pressure to mold the parts which results in low stress and warpage in the parts. It allows for thick ribs and bosses and reduces the risk of sinks over heavy cross-section due to the lower viscosity of the mixture. Next is the superior design flexibility. The process allows a wide range of design flexibility and also superior parts and process repeatability are possible. Appealing surface characteristics. The parts of structural foam molding have a consistent surface finish. Its finished product is glossier than the other low-pressure methods. Structural foam molding has a low life expectancy for products. It has a lower than average risk of damage in the mold or during the removal process, making it highly efficient and easily repeatable method, and it is often lasts long due to the lower pressure use. Next is superior impact, element, and temperature resistance. Structural foam molding experience minimal to no thermal expansion, making it perfect for products which will be utilized in a wide variety of temperatures. It also has an excellent replacement for other materials. For large parts can be produced and this can be replaced a wide range of materials, from concrete to sheet metal to fiberglass to wood. The surface is easy to clean and can be sawn, screwed, nailed, and tapered without experiencing any problems. Next, different materials can be run simultaneously. This means that multiple parts and multiple tooling can be run on a single machine. Multiple colors can also be applied to a single part in mold. Structural foam molding has low-cost materials. Recycled post-consumer materials can be used in this process, and parts produced are also recyclable. Lower pressures and clamming forces are required during the injection and curing periods, allowing the tooling and mold to be made from low-cost materials such as aluminum. Also, at low pressure, it can already produce optimum product quality. Thus, less energy and materials are used, resulting in energy savings. Lastly, increased strength and stiffness. The structure within the parts give them very high strength to weight and stiffness to weight ratios. Can achieve between 10% to 30% weight reduction without affecting structural integrity. In addition, structural foam is strong and stiff. In fact, up to 8% stiffer than similar materials such as solid polymers. Also, since it is foam, the materials make for a great thermal and acoustic insulator. Let's move on to the disadvantages. The following are the disadvantages of structural foam molding. The first disadvantage is that air trap in mold causing the burning. If the mold is not properly vented, then air trap in the cavity can cause the edge of the part to burn where the improper venting is taking place. So mold should be inspected and the venting must be fixed to where proper gas is released. The second one is bubbles are showing in the finished part. This usually happens due to the moisture. Next is shrinkage. This occurs due to not enough plastic for molding. While flow lines usually occurs in the product surface where there are some marks due to unbalanced flow of mold in the gates and runners. It is caused by varying speeds at which the molten plastic flows as it changes direction through the contours and bends inside the mold tool. They also occur when the plastic flows through sections with varying wall thickness or when the injection speed is too low causing the plastic to solidify at different speeds. Lastly, low production speeds. The process itself takes longer which means that you need to invest more time into producing structural foam molded components. That's all for our report. Thank you for listening.